just the AI. Yeah, it's the AI. Simply because like I love working with computers and, and, and every data scientist, I think, right, so far, I always try to find something new or you know try to learn. So hello everyone. Today we have Bo Bovin Zhang, who is currently working as a data science teaching assistant at Brain Station. So today we are going to have some conversation about data science topics at the same time. Today we have a session about career guidance towards data science as friends. So first of all, sir, thank you very much for spending your time out of your busy day. Yeah. No worries. Happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So first of all, what did you do as a data science teaching assistant? At Brain Station, and how day how does your nine to day looks like? Yeah, so um, actually, so for those who don't know, Brain Station is a uh, boot camp that tries to put a lot of transitioning people or aspiring people into the tech space. And uh, I'm part of the data science program. Um, so my kind of nine to five as a day, as a teaching assistant uh, is that we start off doing a sort of tutorial, so like a kickoff uh, lecture in the morning that's led by the teaching assistants. And it's sort of just to introduce like some cool topics or extra uh, review and stuff like that um, to the students. And that's every morning from uh, nine to 10, or sorry, 9.30 to 10. Um, and then, you know, uh, that's kind of how we start off our day. And then we help the instructors during the lectures. Uh, we also, you know, try to help the students uh, by answering, you know, questions that they have or um, support them in any way. Um, and they can usually join office hours. They will come to us and they will, uh, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we can, you know, go through some of their assignments or some questions or even just talk about data science um, and, you know, what they want to do for their next project and what they want to uh, try out in, in, the, in the data science world now that they're trying to become one, right? Uh, like not only about data science technical topics, will you also be trained about resume preparation? Or something about us. Yeah, so at BrainStation, they do resume. They do, um, you know, how to how to work your LinkedIn, how to network with people, and how to like find a job and, and be build that kind of professional brand, right? Uh, but that is, isn't really part of the TH jobs. Uh, that is like we have a whole different department uh, called the, the Career Development Department, and and they take care of all of that. They do workshops. They have uh, you can set up one on one meetings with them, and they support you even after you uh, graduate. Yeah, it's really sounds really good, sir. So, like, uh, sir, can you share your pathway or your journey from uh, university to present uh, data science teaching assistant? Like, it was yeah. really interesting to a lot of people to understand how you become a data scientist. Like, a lot of people have their own paths. At the same time, there's a lot of articles and resources available throughout the internet. So, okay. yeah. it was really very interesting on sharing your journey so that people may really find very useful so that they can end up like you. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah, like I, like every data scientist, I think right, as so far has their u own unique journey because it's such a new field that you see a lot of people that kind of come from different backgrounds. Right. Yeah. Uh, even like when I was going through the brain station program, uh, you s there was people from a wide variety of backgrounds. I think half of us had uh, masters of science and like biomed. There was like mechanical engineers. There was a guy who was in, in mathematics uh, so very wide range of, of, of different backgrounds and everybody's coming to data science now because it's a new role and it's yeah. kind of like the novelty, you know? Um, but for me personally, uh, you know, I've, I've always been someone who gets bored really easily. Uh, you know, I always try to find something new or, you know, try to learn or grow or continue to do something or else I get just bored. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So like, yeah. So like initially I think uh, I studied economics. So I worked a little okay. bit with data in, in undergrad um, but then, you know, uh, I come to learn, uh, you know, it, it just didn't feel like, uh, something that I really wanted to, to do continuously, but I did love data at that time. I didn't know what data science was yet. Uh, so what I did was I did an internship between my third and fourth year of my undergrad, uh, as an IT data analyst, um, at a company yeah. called Celestica. It's a Canadian company. Um, and I did a couple of projects there. I did lots of good work. So I had to kind of split between project management and also data work. So it was a combination of both. Um, and after I finished there, I kind of had an idea of where, what I wanted to do and, and what my strengths and weaknesses were. So I started exploring like consulting a little bit actually, um, because I felt like I had that kind of project management and, and customer success kind of um, uh, experience from that, that internship under my belt. So I did software implementation for the automotive industry. And we basically go to different automotive dealerships and we try to, uh, as a B2B SAS business, uh, try to uh, 
implement customer success with the software and kind of do a little bit of consulting and, and a little bit of analytical work because we would set up like dashboards and try to find uh, ways to improve the, the business, right? So, um, but, you know, simply because like I love working with computers and, and, and programs, I had a fascina- fascination for uh, software implementation, but quickly it became boring. Like I said, I get bored very easily, right? And I, w- I wasn't really growing in that role. Uh, everybody around me was already in their comfort zone. And, you know, in the automotive industry, there wasn't much innovation going on uh, at that time. And it just didn't feel like the whole culture was vibing with me, right? Uh, and, and personally, I felt like I was falling behind in a world that was fastly changing and moving forward, right? Um, so I then decided to go back to economics and data. Um, that's when I did my mac- micro master program. Uh, it was a uh, it was the first time that the program was introduced and uh, it was the first year the program ro- rolled out and it was offered by MIT um, and you could do essentially graduate courses with them uh, online. And at that time it was like a year before COVID. So like nobody really kind of vied with the online space. Uh, so now obviously everything we're doing, even this interview is online. Right. But before that wasn't really that popular yet. Um, so I felt like it was perfect for me because I loved pioneering and trying new things. So I enrolled and then I, took those graduate courses and I learned like really fascinating things with economics and what you can do with, you know, statistical analysis, experimental design and everything. Um, But the the focus of that was mainly research. uh, And I felt like research was a little bit too slow paced for me. Uh, But there was one lecture that was really key for me and that was the machine learning lecture. And that's where I started to, you know, become enamored and I fell in love with with that whole concept and and started to understand what the possibilities of data science are and what data science really was, right? So I kind of dug deeper and then I fell in love with like the, the whole topic. And uh, what was really fascinating to me was that I, I, after like all these years of not knowing what to do, feeling bored of different things that I tried, data science was the only one that I felt like it fit and I belonged there because it was so expansive and there's so many new novel things that I could learn. Um, so that's kind of where like I, I, I continued that data science journey. Um, and once I finished my MicroMaster, I just started doing more self-learning. So uh, really, you know, doing MOOCs, online courses uh, from Udemy. You can do it, you know, on YouTube, reading different textbooks. And uh, I also completed like the, the uh, Coursera uh, specialization that was offered by John Hopkins. It was like a 10, 10 course data science specialization. Yeah, with R. yeah, so that was a really good course. I recommend for beginners. It's kind of outdated a little bit because it uses R and less not, and now we kind of use Python, right? Um, but it was a really good foundational course that if you, anybody's interested, I'd recommend taking. Um, and yeah, so in yeah. uh, the past year, that's essentially been my journey. Um, and, but I'm still continuing to grow and, and develop as a data scientist. Okay. Uh, so, you know, uh, for anyone who isn't sure or is confused uh, what they want to do or if they want to go into data science, uh, don't worry, because mine was, as, as, you, as you can just hear, it was just as confusing and difficult and, you know, yeah. long-winded. And it's only just began. <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing, oh, yeah. sir. Like, sir, like uh, you actually talk about talk about a little bit of research. Uh, like, having a research background in entering into data science is really, really very helpful. In case of me, I have recently published my first research paper on tracing the clinical data set of COVID-19 and predicting the COVID-19 data set, and it was successfully published on IJSREM journal. So, at the same time, presently I am pursuing my bachelor, like undergraduate from VIT University in third year. And I am planning to do my master's in research in analytical field. So how it will be really helpful for me for getting into any data science or AI field, which I, where I can explore research and more things. That's a good question. I think it depends on what kind of branch of data science you want to do personally. Like, do you want to be, because in data science, there's a lot of different roles, right? Like there's machine learning engineer. Uh, there's people who are more towards like the business side. There's people who are uh, more towards just analyzing and doing studies almost. Um, and there's also people who are kind of just focusing on the, the data analysis stuff as well, right? Um, so it, in, if, you, if you're doing a master's program uh, to do data science, um, it, 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 it doesn't kind of make sense to do something that's like not related to data science. Like if you wanted to do machine learning engineer, I think like a master's in computer science would be useful. Um, but you know, you wouldn't want to do like a, like a master's in electrical engineering and then go into data science. Right. If, if, if data science is your end goal, that's what I mean. Um, so now th- th- with data science, even though it's kind of new, there's a lot of programs and, and master's programs that are coming out uh, from, you know, very good universities 
that have a data science, you know, masters of science of data science of analytics, uh, masters of management of analytics, depending on, you know, if you want to be on the business side more, if you want to be on the technical side more. So for those of you who want to do like, like a master's program, definitely look into those. Uh, if you want to do the more traditional route, from what I've seen from job postings, um, they usually want to hire people who are, uh, you know, in computer science, statistics, uh, stuff that can be kind of easily transferable to data science. It's really great. So, yeah, I got it. Somewhat insight and clarity. So I just, in the same time, like, uh, like uh, talking about data science, it's, I always believe that it was generally a drawing insights from data and making business decisions and helping in the business world. Like someone, like one of my friends asked me if that is storytelling is really helpful in data science. Like some of us are very scared about speaking in front of a lot of people or some kind of uh, presentation. So is storytelling will there play a major role in kind of data science or not? Um, yeah, storytelling, um, it's, it's, it's probably one of the most important things you, you want to do as a data scientist uh, because when you find the insights, you, it makes sense to you, but, but how does it make sense to the people that are paying you to find these insights, right? Like how, how does it make sense to uh, the business as a whole, the organization? And for you to be able to, you know, take all this work that you do in, in, in like a couple of weeks or whatever and summarize it and present it to say, here's what I found and here's how it can benefit you. That's very crucial in the business world. So that's something that is kind of underrated. And, um, you know, we, when we become data science, we focus so much on the technical skills. We focus on, you know, learning and education and building like an awesome portfolio. But a lot of people who I talk to in the industry, like um, people who are, you know, at, at different companies that are data scientists, they say, you know, when we hire somebody, we really care about the storytelling part. And that's something that no one really kind of focuses on. So you're absolutely right. Storytelling is, is super important. And whoever gave you that advice is, is good. <laughs> Got it, sir. Like uh, at the same, then I come into the next question. Like, do we really need a good CGPA or good, uh, like good uh, academic background for getting into a top company or fan companies? Like academic related background or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember myself asking that question yeah, during a technical Q and A. Uh, I think it was with. Um, it was, it was a recruiter from Activision um, and, and, some, and, and like uh, League Inc. And, and different companies, Capital One. So th we had some re top recruiters and we asked them that question because, you know, everybody's wondering the same thing. We see these postings and they always say, you know, masters of science or PhD and, and whatever. Um, and, and I'm just going to quote their answer because they're like, you know, they know uh, the, the, the industry a lot better. And they said that before when data science was kind of new, uh, people didn't really know what data scientists were. So they would kind of ask for PhD level and, and you know, uh, very high educational backgrounds because they weren't really sure what data scientists can do. But now that data science has kind of evolved a little bit more, they started understanding that people who, you know, uh, have masters or bachelors or even, you know, uh, just doing their own projects or whatever, they were able to do the same work as the people who have, uh, you know, PhDs and whatever, because uh, we start to understand what the role is a lot better. So the more we're going forward, uh, I, I, they've been seeing that companies actually lower their, their standards for, uh, you know, their educational backgrounds. Um, and even, you know, now, like a lot of big companies, especially, they just take students straight out of uh, undergrad even. Does uh, open sources really, really play a kind of major role, like LinkedIn, GitHub, Kaggle? So this kind of open sources will really play any kind of major role in, in showcasing our skills and our uh, capabilities in, in phase of data science. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I think the most important are, are LinkedIn and, and GitHub. Um, I think those are kind of standard for today's industry and, and, you know, work professionalism, your, your brand. Uh, so um, we, we, I was at a talk with uh, Andre, I uh, forgot his last name, but he, he's a, he's a, mm -hmm. you know, very yeah, high, know. high up. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know him yeah, at uh, Honeywell. Yeah. Um, and, and he, he said that, you know, what you want to do to leverage uh, GitHub and LinkedIn, and this kind of resonated with me a lot, was um, he says, if you want to work in an in industry and you want to be a data scientist, first pick out, you know, what industries you want to work for, right, in, in data science. And then you want to understand what problems or problem space these companies are trying to solve. And then you want to start doing projects that align with the problems that they're trying to solve. 
so then you, you, you do those projects, you know, um, you, you put them on GitHub, which is super important. And then on LinkedIn, what you want to do is you want to connect with people and you want to post updates of your project linking back to your, your GitHub yeah. um, so that, you know, you, you gain traction on, hey, look, this guy is doing something that, you know, I'm hiring for or our company's trying to solve. Um, and it doesn't have to be the exact same project. It just has to be something in that space, right? So uh, that way you kind of almost attract people to you instead of you hand, handing out resumes to them, right? So you kind of, it's very powerful to leverage that kind of, that kind of uh, magnetism, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, sir, as working as a data science, uh, teaching as a data science, you actually have a good idea on uh, what is the exact te technical and what is the exact non-technical skills for getting into data science. Like, can you please discuss about some of the technical and non-technical skills that really and must and should that a person could learn for getting into any kind of data science field? Yeah. yeah. Um, so technical skills, um, I think at the very basis of the foundation, I think you need to know a little bit of either statistics uh, mm -hmm. or programming, right? Um, statistics, because uh, when you do a lot of statistical analysis, when you work with a lot of um, you know, models and stuff like that, the, the kind of underlying theory is statistics. Um, although there are like, for example, machine learning engineers who just have a very heavy computer science background um, and they just kind of, you know, use the packages and they just do iterations of it. But I think statistics is very important because it, it helps you understand what you're doing. Uh, so you, you become more key at it. Um, and again, programming, obviously. So like working with, I would say, Python, that's the kind of the biggest uh, uh, programming language to know. Understanding sklearn, um, that whole ML yeah. package. Um, pandas, NumPy, right? Um, that's the kind of core fundamentals and, mat and matplotlib. Uh, yeah. Those are the three, I think my TA, my TA from my cohort called it the golden trinity, which is NumPy, pandas, and matplotlib for, for Python. Um, and you definitely want to use like Jupyter uh, Notebook or Jupyter Labs to, um, to do your kind of uh, yeah. analysis and stuff like that as well. Um, SQL is actually one of the Important. It's actually really important. From from what I heard from my instructor, he's saying that SQL, you, surprisingly, you're going to use that quite often uh, because you're working with databases a lot, right? Seriously. So getting to know SQL, at least knowing SQL is important, but you know, um, you don't have to be like the, the biggest master of it. Um, yeah. And yeah, so right. like those yeah. are the common. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yes. Yeah, like so, like in my in my present scenario, I have done uh, totally like till now hundred like, uh, completed three internships in place of data science and AI field. So awesome! Like I was really very like when I like when I was doing any kind of internship, I there was getting lots of chance for learning and new new things from recruiters at the same time my top seniors. So my friends are also beginning to ask like, there's uh, does internship really really plays any kind of role? or will place any kind of helpful in getting into data science or any kind of job? Yeah, internships, yeah. right, 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 sorry. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I think so. Um, you don't have to have one, in my opinion, but they help you a lot, a lot more because you, know, you, you get that foot through the door. So if you're, in, if you're in school, right, if you're in undergrad, if you're in, uh, you know, doing your master's right now, there's a lot of uh, 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 companies that are even hiring right now because right now it's kind of the season for hiring uh, new graduates yeah. and interns. Exactly. Um, so, so definitely go look and apply to, to some of these internship programs because, uh, like, I don't know about, about, uh, where you are, but in Canada, the, the government gives you subsidies, uh, for yeah. hiring interns. So it, it's another motivation for them to want to hire you. Um, so definitely try to go and do a, do an internship. That's very, very key. Yeah. Like I'm presently from India. Okay. Yeah. Like sir, at the same time, like I always have a doubt in my mind that oh, like there will be newest Trending technologies will be coming in coming days and present also. Like how will experts like you stay updated in data science or machine learning techniques? Like how will update their self? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I just want to clear the air. I I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still a learner. You know, yeah, I hope you're fine. nowhere near an expert. Um, okay. But I have seen experts um, who are, you know, my instructors and stuff, how they keep abreast in data science is, uh, well, it kind of depends on, what kind of data scientist you are and how you learn, mm -hmm. right? Um, so like, for example, uh, one of my instructors, he, he has a very heavy math background. He has a PhD and he learns by, you know, just go, uh, reading different uh, articles, reading uh, a lot mm -hmm. and, and reading like, you know, 
um, journals, academic journals, and even some of like the, the new cases and stuff like that for, for data science, right? Um, personally, for me, I, 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 I had a problem with reading because I have ADHD. Like okay. I said, I get bored very easily, right? Okay. So what I do is I rely on video. Like that's how I learn. I'm a visual learner. So yeah. I, I try my best to, you know, take uh, courses on Coursera, even like auditing them because you can audit them for free, right? It's just yeah. your learning. Um, yeah, you can go exactly. on YouTube. There's so many, so many good uh, resources on YouTube now. Um, and uh, there's a channel that I watch a lot. It's called Two Minute Paper. Um, okay. And it's, uh, yeah, so what, what, it, what it does is it tries to explain a whole uh, study done in about, you know, two to five minutes. And then it gives you a link to that study if you want to read further or not. And it has some really cool ones on AI, on uh, data science and stuff like that. So I definitely recommend that channel um, if you want to keep abreast. Uh, other than that, you know, blogs, uh, reading medium towards data science. Um, yeah. And those are, are very useful too. Yeah. Cool study. Like, uh, like is finally do you uh, uh, can you please give any kind of advice for present undergraduates uh, students for getting into data science and who are students who are planning for pursuing their career towards data science um yeah like if you sh if you're sure that you want to be a data science scientist um carve out like a sort of plan uh of what you want to do um and also be aware of you know what are your skills now and what you need to learn uh but also uh be a learner I think that's the biggest advice I can give because uh, there are PhDs out there uh, who want to learn data science too, but it doesn't mean they have more data science experience than, okay. than you do or, or even knowledge, right? Um, so you just need to outlearn them and gain more experience. Uh, but first, you, you shouldn't be afraid to learn. Um, the, the end result isn't getting a data science job. You know, that's, the goal is how can you use data to have fun? Um, I think data scientists are like you know, chefs and they can create wonderful Everything. dishes with data, yeah. you know? So um, definitely do projects, um, you know, do, do start off with Kaggle. Like, like sorry, I forgot to mention Kaggle before, but yeah, so you can start off doing Kaggle, uh, doing Kaggle competitions, trying to understand how that works. And then once Kaggle, you're, you're getting comfortable with that, start working with your own ideas and, and your own projects. Um, you know, just, just for example, like uh, for one of my projects during BrainStation, I decided to create an app that can, uh, automatically detect language from 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 speech using uh, deep learning, okay. right? Um, and I had to collect <clears throat> I had to collect data uh, by scraping it off the off of a repository, organize it, and then convert it into the data data that I need. And that took longer than the actual modeling part. And that's okay. reflects you know what a real data scientist would do in the real world, right? Yeah, exactly. Whereas in in Kaggle, all the data sets are kind of clean for you, <laughs> right? Yeah, obviously. So, yeah, so Kaggle is a great way to start, but when, when you start getting comfortable with using data, definitely try building your own, own cr projects, get creative, start collaborating, uh, talk to people in the industry, and uh, have a plan out, you know, like, um, do you want to go do an do a internship, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to do a master's program? Do you want to do a boot camp, for example? Just kind of plan ahead, and uh, there's no one right way to do it. Just be a learner. Uh, so, sir, first of all, thank you very much for your time. And I think this was an amazing conversation. And pretty sure that people will are going to find it was really, really, very helpful. And thank you very much. And have a very nice day, sir. Thank yeah. you. Hope it helped. <laughs> yeah. uh,